W. DJ Hyde's one of them. DJ Hyde's a great guy. Very great. I, like I, had the, I had the pleasure to meet him yet. Um, you know, the, uh, but, you know, I've wrestled in the Carnage Cup and yeah. um, some of the King, you know, King, and uh, I met a, a lot of guys through there. And uh, they're the hardest working guys in the end of business. Yeah, they are. I, I will agree with you there. ZZW has a tremendous reputation. I think they're classified as the ECW of the independents. And Ring of Honor, I've had the opportunity of interviewing many Ring of Honor talents. Christopher Daniels is one of them. Jerry Lynn's another one, former uh, ROH champion, great guys. And I just recently spoke with Kerry Silken about the whole CM Punk thing. And he told me CM Punk you're seeing on TV is pretty much the actual CM Punk. There's no you know gimmick attached to it or anything like that. What do you think of the whole CM Punk thing that we're seeing now about telling the truth? Uh, is this a way for Ring of Honor talents to enter WWE now, or what do you put that into perspective for us? Uh, speaking from the perspective uh, of an indie worker, I, I actually, I actually like the way that it's going. I mean, especially with WWE going PG, at least you know somebody's out there being honest and uh, getting it scripted or what. You know, at least he's. Uh, doing the real deal out there and I respect that and uh, that's the only reason right now I guess if I was to watch WWE mm. it would be to uh, do what CM Punk you know is going to say or is going to do and so, the, uh, and the yeah, I like, I like what, what they're doing with him oh yeah I, I really enjoy CM Punk I like the idea of this is me this is who I am and if you don't like it you don't have to watch me basically that's right I like that now, it's talking about the state of the women's division right now in WWE, TNA's knockouts division is okay. Uh, it seems like they're ahead of WWE in terms of uh, you know female competition quite well. Uh, but uh, the women's division in WWE, Kelly Kelly is the Divas champion. Have you seen any of that? What's your opinion on Kelly Kelly as the Divas champion? Do you think this needs to be happening? Um, no, I don't. Really, man, to tell you the truth, and this is no disrespect to WWE women or anything, but when most of them are in the ring working, man, um, you know, going to get something to drink, or cause there's just very few, you know, uh, Melina and Gail Kim and, uh, you know, the the heart. Um, like I said, I want Natalia, you know, she can, I, I like watching her work, but as far as, uh, you know, the Bella Twins or Kelly Kelly, I really don't care to watch. Yeah. And the sad thing is about Kelly Kelly is, I mean, they thought that she was going to last six weeks. And here she's Divas Champion in her fifth year. And and, and the only thing I can say is why. <laughs> why? <laughs> <laughs> why? And you spoke there pretty highly of Natalia. I actually had the chance of interviewing Natalia's father, of course, Jim Nambo Nightheart. And he spoke so fondly of Natalia. And, uh, you know, I thought that she was going to go a long way. And all she's really become is a glorified manager of the Hart Dynasty who gets in ring time once every four to five months. Right, right. I've seen her at a dark, uh, or, well, it was at a, at a house show in Huntsville, Alabama, but she was in the, uh, one of the first matches of the dark match. And uh, I I didn't really know of her then, but, man, she, she put on a great show, man. She, she worked her ass off, and uh, I was a big fan of her ever since then. Yeah. I got props to the girl. She can work. Now, Melina, they, they just let Melina go, and that's a bit of news that I actually posted an article in our news center about Melina trying to invade Raw, whatever that was supposed to be about. We have over 16,000 articles in our news center, and that invasion plan by Melina was one of the articles. Uh, I had no acknowledgement of her being released, but according to what you're telling me, Melina was released, and that's the unfortunate thing. I saw her work a match against Kelly probably a month ago, now she's gone. I had the chance of interviewing Jesse Hernandez, and he told me that uh, she he doesn't even follow Melina anymore, and I found that kind of ironic because he trained her, and uh, I guess he's caught up on what he's doing on the indies, but Melina being gone is just very unfortunate. Yeah, yeah. Um, Melina is a real good worker. I have seen her work like WWE shows, and uh, as far, like I said, as far as I've seen on her Facebook status uh, a couple months ago, and stuff like that, that she was released, along with Gail Kim and a few others, but, uh, yeah, I really enjoy her, her work, um, and it, her, uh, boyfriend, John Morrison, I really appreciate his work, I, I like the hard work that he does also. Yeah. Um, it's, it's unfortunate. Yeah, he's a hell of a worker. 
it's unfortunate that Melina was released. Uh, very, very unfortunate. I mean, she was she was great. I mean, she she was a, a true example of a hard worker. And I know that Gail Kim was released, but strangely enough, oddly enough, I didn't know about Melina. So that's unfortunate. So definitely, I'm wishing her all the best uh, in her future endeavors and, and everything like that. Now, what do you think is the main reason? Uh, a lot of people are passing away, unfortunately. We're seeing several wrestlers die every two to three months now. We're up to about 35 to 40 deaths. What do you think is one of the main reasons why all these deaths are occurring? Um, I, I would say because of the demanding uh, schedule. The, um, I haven't done it like um, but 12 years, but it, the, the bumps every night, the, uh, uh, you know, you get surgeries, um, I've gained a lot of weight, trying to lose weight. I have my shoulder surgery, man. I got put on pain pills, and I'm trying to wing myself off of them. Um, I think it has a lot to do with the depression, you know. Um, some workers make it pretty good up there in the business, and then when they get back down, you know, they can't make it back to that status again. So they, uh, I believe they just get depressed, man, and just uh, lean to drugs or something. Or, uh, or that's my opinion, anyway. Yeah, they, they just turn to drugs and stuff like that, I understand that. And I've had many friends in this business die. Uh, Michael Porter, former WWF ring announcer in 1993, back in the early 90s, uh, passed away a year ago on the 28th of this month, and then Dr. Death, who I had the privilege of interviewing in one of his final interviews, I think it was his final interview, and uh, who's the other guy I'm trying to think of? Uh, Bastion Booker is another guy who I interviewed in one of his final interviews. He's dead and gone. I was uh, the lead voice of the Andrew Martin tribute show, the memorial service done for him and Killer Kowalski. It seems like, and, and fans don't understand, you know, once you've been involved with this several years, uh, in my case 13, uh, it's almost like having one of your closest friends pass away. And I mean, you have a, a close friend die probably once every 10 years and then multiply that, what we go through, uh, once every three months. And it's, uh, it's right. sad, you know. It's, it's crazy. Very, very it's really, it's really crazy. Because um, the, you know, even though if you didn't know them, you know, real well, you still, uh, they're you're, they're your brother. You know what I mean? You're, you're in the ring with them, and or you you know of them being in the ring, and you watch them on TV. You just got a connection with them regardless. I hate the fact how WWE are always promoting Facebook and Twitter and YouTube. So I'll ask you, do you have anything like Facebook, YouTube, Twitter you want to promote now? or And how do you find the Internet? Do you enjoy using it to promote your what your work and your videos and stuff? Actually, yes. Uh, I have the Facebook. Uh, you know, I've got a few matches on uh, YouTube. Um, you know, back when I was in these, the, the little indie, I'm still in the little indie, excuse me, but, you know, not, not many people recorded the matches and, uh, you know, didn't post them on YouTube like they do nowadays. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, like, from the Carnage Cup, it's posted on, uh, on YouTube and, uh, on my Facebook and stuff like that. So, yeah, I, I love the use of internet. Do you have anybody do the videos and stuff for you, or do you kind of do that independently yourself? Because you, usually sometimes somebody has somebody do that for them. Do you have anybody put it together, or do you do it yourself? Um, here lately, um, since I've been coming back, I've been trying to, uh, take somebody with me that, you know, can record or you know, film a match or something like that. But uh, some of these guys that I've been working at actually record the whole show. So yeah. that's, that's a plus, too. That's great, too. Yeah, I know that a lot of people, you know, sometimes do it independently. Sometimes that's not the right thing to do because then you can go out and you can hire somebody who has, you know, great interest in it and kind of put the graphics and stuff together for you, and, and that's fun, too. I've been seeing a lot of... Uh, documentaries about independent uh, companies, like there's one here in Canada called uh, ECCW, and they just put together a documentary called uh, This Wrestling Life, I think it's called. I'm think, trying to get a hold of one of the guys who was actually featured in the film. Do you think that uh, documentaries benefit the business uh, in terms of, you know, like, uh, especially on the independents, or do you think they can be kind of negative, uh, shed some negative light towards, you know, actually, the, the business? Actually, I think, I think they help because a lot of people and I hate this word, and, you know, it makes you just want to punch them, you know what I'm saying, the fake word, and the, uh, oh, you do, and, you know, you wrestle, you know, um, they really don't know what uh, an independent wrestler goes through. Yeah. You know, the, the every, he's an every nighter, or he's just a weekend warrior, or it don't matter, you know, he's, they really don't realize what some of them go through, and um, that's why I think 
pro wrestling is one of the, uh, along with football, one of the roughest sports that you can actually be in. Yeah, crazy. Football, though, I uh, can't say that I'm a huge football fan. I, I will tell you that. Now, health care, talking about what they go through and stuff, do you think it would be great if we had some kind of union on the independents? Yes, yeah, that, that would be great. I mean, that would, you know, um, you know, but at the same time, I do it for the love of it, and uh, just having a union would be uh, about more about the money, and, but it would be nice. It, you know, I get a city busy. I do it more of the sport, but yet I would love to have something like that because, you know, my third pad, you know, was almost $7,000, yeah. and so it was a little minor stuff. Yeah. So I, a union would be a plus, but then a union would also be a fail because I don't think um, independent show there wouldn't be that many more independent shows as much yeah the thing about it is you know I, I'm trying to raise awareness about uh, the whole healthcare thing and stuff and, and hopefully something will come into fruition although it's not going to be anytime soon now you mentioned the word fake and stuff so this kind of relates to the question I'm going to ask you next if you had to pick one word to describe professional wrestling other